Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another BFT Tech video. Uh, today we're going to be going over the Kustos A40 and A25, of course with our Talia P control board from our Talia family line of control boards. Um, you know, the first thing I always like to go over in these videos, of course, is going to be your geometry because, you know, with these motors, geometry is the most important thing, you know, for longevity and also for your um, motor to have the leverage it needs to be able to open a heavy gate and close a heavy gate and, and handle it for a long time. Uh, of course, so, you know, again, for demonstration purposes, we're going to be inside of the property looking out. Uh, and so we're inside looking out. And of course, this is the right gate, right? So we're connecting this to the right gate. Um, this right here, let's say this is the hinge of that right gate, right? And for if you're doing the Kustos A40, your first measurement coming from the hinge out would be six inches. And then from that point over, five and a half inches. So you want to get a six by five and a half, that little L there. And that's where the, uh, the butt end of your operator pin should be. Now your measurement, uh, your gate should be in the closed position. Your measurement from this spot over to the gate bracket should be 46 and a half inches. So remember, the Custo say 40 is um, six by five and a half and then 46 and a half. Now let's say you're doing the Custo say 25, you wanna do just over five inches and then just over five inches. So your L would be a little over five and a little over five, and then you're gonna go in the closed position again uh, to 42 inches from this point over to the gate bracket. All right, so of course, also if you check in the description, there's the BFT Easy Set app. Uh, there'll be a link there so you can download those apps, and that could also help you out uh, if you, you know, to try to get some different numbers for whatever reason you got a weird setup there. Um, all right, so that brings us to the next step, um, and that would be the wiring. And now this part's important is because you know, I've seen a lot of people put really thin cable on there and you want to make sure you don't go thinner than 16 gauge, you know, stranded cable. So that is the cable you want to go with. And of course, direct burial. Uh, and I always try to tell people to stay away from junction boxes, but I know that's not always the case. But if you can, you know, stay away. So 16 gauge direct burial. Um, and then, of course, it will be connected uh, to the butt end of the operator and your connections will be um, one, two and three on the operator. Right. So your number one is going to be white. Your number two is going to be red or green, depending on the cable that came with BFT. And then your number three will be black, right? So that's for one or two motor operation. All of them will be from one to three. It'll be white, red, black, or white, green, black, right? So then that runs over and you're going to come over to your control board. When you look inside your control board, you're going to notice your red or your green is going to go to 10. Your black is going to go to 11. And of course your limit switch cable will go to 42. Now let's say you have a two motor operation. This will be the same in the back, but you'll have your green or red going to 14, your black going to 15, and of course your limit switch cable will go to 43. All right, so we've knocked a couple things out here. Everything seems to be going smoothly. We've got our geometry good. We've got our uh, 16 gauge cable direct burial installed. Uh, the very next thing would be to get your limit switches, right? So your limit switches are actually underneath the motor. So I have the motor upside down. Take this little Phillip head screw out, take this little plastic piece out, and you'll be able to slide this cover off to be able to expose the limit switches and get to the limit switches. Now, if you look right here, this is your limit switch. This is your magnet that runs up and down with the shaft, and this is your limit switch. These guys out here are your positive stops. I want you to stay away from these until the very end, okay? So these you leave in place. You're only worried about your limit switches and then the magnet runs up and down. So you got your geometry right, you got this thing on the gate, you're gonna use the key that comes with the operator, you're gonna open the manual release, it's on the top side of the operator, remember I have it upside down. Um, you turn that key and you're gonna be able to open your gate to the position you want to be opened, and you'll notice this magnet will be in a certain spot and you'll wanna match it with the limit switch, right? So same thing, when it's in the closed position, when you know you want the gate to be closed right there, then you'll match the other limit switch with it. Now it really depends if it's pushed to open or close to open, which one's which, but you'll be able to tell more or less which one this is closest to when you're trying to adjust the limit switch. All right, so you put your gate open, you did one of your limits, you put your gate closed, you did your other limit, you feel pretty confident. Again, you can tweak these at the end. Uh, you just wanna more or less be in the right area and do your auto set. Um, okay, so we got our limits done. Make sure you don't lose these little caps either. The little caps are important to keep your limits from floating over time. 
Um, so we seem to have everything okay. Everything's wired okay. So your next step would be obviously to go to uh, do the control board. Now, the only thing is, remember, if you have a Talia UL or anything UL of ours, you have to make sure you have your photo beams installed. Uh, please follow that link above uh, to put your photo beams in correctly. And again, stay away from 10K. All that will be gone over in the, in the photo beam uh, video. Just wanted to mention it again. All right, so now geometry is good. Limit switch is set. Wiring is correct. Photo beam is installed. Now we can talk to the control board. All right, so we will go over to the quick setup, and there's three buttons. The top one is plus, the middle one is minus, and the bottom one is OK. So you're going to want to push the OK button one time. It's going to say language. You want to select English, type. Uh, you know, all of our Talia lines, you can select several up to eight different motors. Uh, but for today, we're just going on the Custos. Select OK. It's going to tell you number of motors. Uh, one or two, we're going to select one for the demo purposes. Uh, direction, all right, so EXT is normally push to open, INT is normally pull to open. Uh, for demo purposes, I'm doing EXT. All right, so now you have your presets. You have AR, which is your automatic residential. Uh, that'll make the gate close automatically. SR is your semi-automatic residential. You have to push the button to open, push the button to close. Uh, then you have your automatic commercial, semi-automatic commercial, uh, more or less the same thing. And then you have your IND. Uh, keep in mind, IND is like a dead man switch. Uh, so unless you plan on having a button wired in direct, where you push and hold the button all the time for the motor to run, uh, this is not suited for you. So try to stray away from that unless that's what you're looking for. So we will go back up to AR. We select that program. All right. So now if everything's correct, the next thing will be auto set. It should count down and if photo beams are installed okay, we'll, the motor will start running. If not right here is normally when you would get an ER01 or ER04 uh, and that's when you should really start checking out your photo beams and, or check out that video I told you a little earlier. All right, so this, if it's the first time you've installed it, uh, it'll open and close three to four times, full open and full close. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, while it's running, nobody goes in the way of your photo beams or anything because then you have to start over again with the quick setup. All right, so now I'll take this time to now touch on your positive stops, all right? So on your positive stops, you'll notice this magnet is coming, it's looking for the limit, looking for the limit, and then it stops, right? Okay, so that is its home. This is where it's going to stop all the time. Same thing in the other direction. You want to check when it runs and it gets to the limit and stop and you finish your auto set and everything went okay. At this time, when everything's done, is when you can now butt this up against this guy and tighten it down. Right, so now you know this magnet's always going to stop here. Now you can butt this up against it, tighten it down. Same thing in the other position. When you click the button, have it run the other way. When it stops by itself on the limit, wherever you have it adjusted, that's when you could butt this guy up against it to give it extra support. All right, so that was just a little extra step. You know, stay away from these until the very end of your installation when you're going home. All right? So everything came out okay. Yep, yeah, we got an okay. That's good news. Now we go over to remote programming. All right, uh, please also check out that link for remote programming. I have other things you can do with the remote or just simply adding more remotes in the future without doing the quick setup. So you want to do the hidden button and that's by pushing the two top buttons and getting a delay in the light. Squeeze both buttons, got the delay, got release on the screen, let go, quickly tap, got an okay and a number. You got a number, you're good. If not, you got to keep trying until you get a number. Um, everything seems to be going smoothly. Let's push okay. We got to end. All right, so now we see C. Now that you see C, you know the gate's in the closed position. If you had two gates, it'd be CC. If it was open, it'd be OO, uh, and so forth. So that's all that means. So let's see if we got it right. All right. Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it.